Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video I am going to show you how to do k-means clustering using circuit learn. Basically, before we get started with the code, let's quickly go over what is um, k-means. So with k-means, um, k random data points are chosen as the initial centroid and k clusters are built around those centroids. So for example, if you are doing three means clustering, okay, we we'll have like um, three random data points are chosen as initial um, centroids and three clusters are built around those centroids. So K right here represents a number. Then the new clusters are used to calculate a new centroid. Then data points recluster using the new centroids. This process repeats until the reclustering process stabilizes and centroids stop moving. And think of the centroid as the average location of all the points in a cluster. So um, that's the process of k-means clustering. That's what's happening. And this is um, the process here again. So first we select a um, random point to act as the initial centroid. So we'll have um, one point Per cluster and then we find the cluster of data surrounding that centroid by assigning points to the centroids that the data lie closest to. So basically let's say we'll pick a we'll pick a centroid and then we'll calculate um, the distance between that centroids and other data points and the data points that lie closest to that centroid will be clustered around that centroid. And then after the clustering process is done, we'll calculate a new centroid. Basically, we'll calculate a new average location for all the points in that particular cluster. And that will, be, that will become the new centroid. And once again, we cluster data around that centroid. And repeat that process over and over again until the centroid stops moving and the cluster stabilizes. With that brief overview of how k-means clustering is works works let's go ahead and um, actually start writing code so let's go ahead and import pandas as pd import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and then from sklearn dot datasets dot sample generator we use it to generate random sample import make blobs so we are going to start by creating a data frame for our k-means clustering and i'm just gonna say x comma y is equal to make blobs and here the first thing you specify is the number of samples that you want and in this case, let's just put n samples as 200. And the next thing you specify is the number of features. That's how many columns do you want on your X data frame. So here I'm going to put n features is equal to 2. You could put something like 4. And I'm going to show you the difference here in a second. So we'll put it as 2. And then the next thing you specify is the number of centers. So basically centers is like how many unique labels do you want for your y value. So here I will start by doing centers equal to let's say 4 for example. And the thing is I'm going to change these values again just to show you what they look like. If I go ahead and run this and then do x here. As you can see we have um, two features right here. And then if I go ahead and let's say just do the top 10, so we won't have to scroll the way down. As you can see, this is the top 10, uh, not what well, the first 10 features in our distant list. If I get and change, if I get and type in Y here, as you can see, we have values between 0 and 3. And that's because I set the centers at 4. If I go ahead and change this to like 5 here, we'll end up with 5 columns. If I run this and run this, now we have five different columns. All right, and that's this. But our number of um, 
our y values um stays the same because we still have four centers if we change this to eight for example we'll end up with values between zero and seven so if we go and run this and let's say run this again now we have values between zero and seven so basically n futures and centers control um, the labels on your y and how many columns you ha have on your x but let's um, go back to the way we had it before just four here and just two here so now we are going to um, create a data frame using our x and y values and this indexing technique right here i'll just show you what it means real quick let me go ahead and copy this and if i go ahead and put this here and actually let me just do uh the first 10 so we won't have to like scroll through a whole lot of stuff so as you can see um right here when we did x um the first 10 right here we have negative 5 4 negative 1 5 stuff like that like the items in the first column is this right here like everything in the first column is what's located in this index all right and if i change this to one then everything in the second column is what's located at this index so if you use this, you see this indexing technique that's what it means so let's go ahead and create a data frame from our x and y let's do df.head as you can see we have our x we have our y then we have our labels so let's start by creating a scatter plot of our data frame before we start doing the clustering. So we're gonna say color is equal to let's print let's put this in a dictionary. So I went ahead and defined a color dictionary, and earlier I think I did import my plot lib as plt. So I just wanted to make sure I had that there, and then I'm gonna define my figure and my axis. It's equal to plt dot subplot, and then I want to group my data by the label column. So I want to use um, this label column to group my data. I have a whole video on pandas group by. I'm going to link it here. So make sure you go to the video on pandas group by to kind of learn more about how to group data. So I'm gonna call it group. It's equal to df dot group by label if you just do this right here it's not gonna show you anything for you to get any answers you actually have to use an aggregate function we can do it here group um, dot sum and it groups it um, by label and then gives you the sum so this is kind of how pandas group by work like i said there's a whole detailed video on it but i'd like to give you a preview of what it looks like and for these labels, um, zero, this is the sum of the values in the X column. For the label one, this is the sum of the values in the Y column. Now we are going to um, plot our, our data frame using these colors and using subplots. So we are going to extract the keys and the values in this group. And then we are going to plot it. And we're basically going to say our plot is equal to this plot so here we define this subplot right here and we are going to say our axis is equal to the ax and then we are going to say we want the kind to be equal to the scatter plot and then we want our x value to be x from this group because you know in this group we have x and y like i showed you we want x to be x we want y to be y and then we want our label to be keys and then we want our color to use the color key that we defined the keys here is going to be something like three one two when we did this group by right we said um this key is equal to this well, actually, it says by equal to this, but this is grouping using a using a key. There's different ways to group, but this is using a key. So this is by equal to. 
is this, but we don't have to say by a quote, we don't have to be explicit like this. So in this situation, label is the key. And we are saying that the key for this graph, that the labels for this graph is these keys, which is zero to three. And we want to say the color for it, for this graph, we want to use this color schema defined in this dictionary. We want a scatter plot, and that's basically it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and show our graph. All right, so now we have our graph. It looks pretty, it looks very nice. So we have four subplots here because of we have four different labels. And every time you run this, it's gonna look a little different. All right, so now it looks different. So if you go back from the beginning and um, let's say run this code all over again, then the corresponding data is gonna be different. So your graph will look different. So now that we have kind of um, defined a a graph like kind of like some blob let's go ahead and actually do the k-means part so so we do from sklearn dot cluster import k-means k-means is equal to k-means let's just call it km so kms why not <laughs> just to Clarify things so you don't so I don't get confused. So here um the default um parameter is setting the number of clusters to eight, but I'm gonna change it um to four. So n clusters equal to four. So basically this is like how many clusters do you want to create at first? In this situation, we just want four clusters. I could change it to five and run this code again so you kind of see the difference. Now we are um, feeding our data. So here we do k means dot fit, and we want to fit our x data. Now the x that we defined earlier here, we want to fit this x data. So now let's go ahead and get the corresponding label. So we can be like um, labels is equal to k ms dot labels and these are the lab, um, labels from fitting our data if you look at the scikit learn um, documentation and scroll down here to labels it tells you that labels is an attribute so attribute is usually stuff you have access to after fitting the model through your data frame so that's where this M labels is coming from, and it's the labels of each point. And so let's just call it, it's equal to PD dot series. And then in parentheses, we put in labels. And here we can do um, label series. Just to get a preview of what it looks like. All right, so basically we took um, this right here and put it in a pandas series. Just looks nicer and works better with data frames. So now we do df, then we create a new future. So df.clusters, I mean, it's going to say it's equal to label series.values. So basically the values in this pandas series. we we'll go ahead and do df.head. As you can see right here, these are the clusters um, and you know the labels from our k-means clustering. We've added it to our data frame. So the next step is um, to get the centroids. And to do this, we'll just create a function. So we we'll call it def centroids. Why not? And then we provide our data frame. I want to provide the column header. We want to provide the column, and then we do new centroids. Then we say that centroid is df dot group by. We want to group by column. 
and then we want to get the mean. Like I said earlier, the centroid is basically the average of the average location of all the points in the cluster. So basically the X centroid is the average location of all the points in the S coordinates and the Y centroid is the average location of all the points in the Y coordinates. Okay, so we want um to group by the column we provide and then we want to get the mean. So that's average and then we want to return centroid. Let's go and run this. And then if we do something like centroid, if we call our function, we we'll provide our data frame and we want to use clusters as our column here. As you can see, these are the um, initial centroids that we are going to be using in our k-means clustering. And here, okay, clusters is 0, 1, 2, 3. And then these are the centroids associated um, with it. And it still has um, the labels here. So this is centroids for X, centroids for Y. So now we are going to create a function for graphing our centroid. I mean our clusters. We are going to call it DEF uh, cluster. And here we are going to provide the data frame. We are going to provide the column. And then we are going to provide the centroids. And we are going to define a color schema that's similar to what we did earlier and define our plot here. And then we want to do ax.plot. We want to plot centroid dot I locate. We want to locate dot X. Okay, so let me go ahead and do this outside. So here centroid DF cluster is right center in this situation. So these are our centroid, like I said earlier. If we go ahead and do center dot I locate and then zero and then dot x as you can see and um, it gives us um, just this value so this value right here is um, the center for this particular x means and then if i put dot y right here it gives me um, this value right here so that's what um, this code is doing if you see it um, don't get confused and then I'm just going to repeat this process again. Actually, I can just copy this and put it here. And here, I'm just going to put um, BO for blue. So if you scroll up here, it says, and if you put BO, it, that it just means to use blue circle markers. All right. Or actually, I may want to use R plus. So let me do R plus here. And then so if you look at the documentation, it tells you like the best way to plot multiple points is to use multiple graphs. So we are going to plot this cluster. This point and this point is the first cluster. This point and this point is the second cluster. This point and this point is um, the third cluster. Okay, so we are going to plot all of them. And we are going to, so we are going to do this multiple times. And we'll change this to 1. And then I want to set the aspect ratio to equal. So, And then we're basically um, going to repeat what we did earlier. We're basically going to do this here. So basically this is the same graph that we did above. But this time it's in a function. And it allows us to plot multiple graphs. And here I want to group by the column, okay, the column here, ah, uh, did I do center? This is supposed to be centroid, <laughs> but we want to reference whatever we pass in here. We already defined a color here to use as the keys, and basically we are pretty much done. So we have defined a function for, for graphing our clusters. With that being said, let's go ahead and combine our centroid with our plot and thin. So let's go ahead and copy this here so you can kind of see where things are coming from. And then let's do cluster. It's what we call our function. Passing our data frame, which is our data frame. The column we want is clusters. 
and then um, the centroids is the center you know this right here that I showed you and just like that we have our initial cluster using our k-means module and this plus symbol right here is because I put R plus right here that is how you would use um, k-means to get your clusters and then use those clusters to plot your data frame I mean your data the first time we plotted this right we just use um, the randomly generated label as the center of the cluster but then the second time that we did this using k-means our center the center of our cluster our centroids was um, determined by k-means we use um, the clusters that was um, determined by k-means and also with k-means you can get other information so you could do something like KMS dot cluster centers and be able to get um, values like this and you could use these values to um, plot this so instead of getting the centroids manually so basically what I showed you earlier right here let me go ahead and redo this so this is the manual method for getting um, the centroids and also you could get the same centroids using the information from k-means so this if you do kms.clusters this is the centroids that it gives you and that's the same information that we have right here when we did our get centroids manual we did the same information so we can save this in a variable like this and then we'll basically um, take this information and put it something like this so now we have um, centroids 2 when we type in centroids 2 we get that and then um, when you run this code right here you will use centroids 2 to graph um, your centroids okay so basically the first way I showed it to you is like I showed you how to get your centroids using a function like this but you could also get your centroids using scikit-learn k-means dot cluster centers you could also use k-means um, to do predictions so for example we could have done let me go ahead and generate a new blob so if I go ahead and generate a new blob here, I'll, I'm going to call it X2 and call it Y2 and then run this and just let's do S2. Let's just look at the first five. All right. So this is a new blob that I, I, I a new set of numbers that I generated. So you could have also done KMS.predict and here um, you basically do put in let's say x2 and it's basically going to look at this um, x value and tell you so based on these numbers which blob uh, which cluster does this new data belong in so you could use uh, k-means to do predictions where you're like okay so I've created a cluster using the first set of data and now I want to do a prediction on the second set of data which cluster does um, these data points belong to and of course you could also um, graph this so you could use KMS to do prediction when you do KMS dot transform and let's say pass in your X for example it's gonna generate um, a few numbers okay and these numbers is just the distance from the data point to the center of the cluster all right so if we go back here to k-means it says you that the transform gives you the distance between that particular data point and the center of the cluster 
If you're interested in that information, you can also get it um, from your K-means data. So how do you know the right number of clusters to choose? Right, when we did um, K-means, we set the cluster to four. How do you know how many clusters to use? So if you want to know the perfect K to use, then you may want to use something called the able method and the able method is just one way for you to find out how many clusters will be good for this data set so i'm gonna go ahead and do df.head and kind of see what my stuff looks like already all right i'm gonna drop these two um columns right here because i don't need it and then i'm gonna do um let's call it df2 is equal to df dot drop and i want to drop label and clusters and then i want the axis to be equal to one we do df2.head and um, so we have the exact same data but without these two columns so we can kind of find out the perfect number of k we should use by calculating the sum of their square distances so uh, this will make more sense in a second so if we do is equal to an empty list let's say we can choose a random k between 1 to 10 and then we can say for i in k we want to do k means we we'll say number of clusters is equal to k or in this case equal to i and then we want to fit km.fit, we want to fit our df2. And then dot append, we want to append km.inertia. So if we go back up here and let's do kms.inertia. And it gives us this number right here. And if we go back to the documentation, look at the attributes, it tells us that inertia is the sum of square distances of samples to their closest cluster center. So we'll go ahead and append that value. And let's run this. Oh, this needs to be capital letter M. So let's go ahead and plot some values. We want to plot K. And then we want to um, plus squared distances. And let's use R plus like we did earlier. We can see the S X label is equal to K. We can do PLT dot Y label. And then we can do PLT dot title. And then we can go ahead and show our graph. It doesn't quite look right. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna use a different graphing thing here. Let's do bx minus. Okay, that looks better. So basically, right here it tells us um so wherever the elbow starts cutting off, that's um, wherever it starts to flatten out, that's where the optimal k is. So in this situation, I'm guessing the optimal k is gonna be three or four. You can experiment with both of them and kind of see uh, what the optimal number is. So I'm going to go back up again and let's say choose 3 as the K and kind of see what our cluster looks like. So up here I'm going to change our cluster to 3 and then I'm going to run this and run everything else as follows. Oh, here I believe we only have 3. So now we only have three clusters and it doesn't look right, you know, because we still have four bubbles. So four clusters is better. So if we go back here to our elbow method, I think we can say that four clusters is a is better for this one because that's where it starts to flatten out. Even if you use like five, six, seven clusters, we'll get the same result as four clusters. So four clusters is optimal in this situation.
So we'll go back and change our cluster to 4. That's basically it for this video. That is how you do K-means clustering. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. To get access to this notebook that I use in today's video, just go to machinelearningeducation.com and once you are here, you can click on free data science resources and you'll be able to get access to this page. And right here is where I have my data science notebooks. I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of blog posts and I just find it easy and straightforward to take all my content and put it in one place. So if you go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free, you get access to this notebook that I use in today's video. You can also find me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blogs. And as time goes by, I add more and more stuff to my data science blogs. And once you are here at evidencen.com, you can also go here. You can also click on that and get to this page, machinelearningeducation.com slash free. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.